explodes on itself and flips around and shit like that. And then oops, it's just it like, was a tree. Oops, it's a tree because you fell asleep at the wheel, you fucking moron. So, ambulance shows up. She goes with him. And Dan's fucked up. And he's like, oh, well, I'm going to put this guy to sleep. sleep. No, and you're she not. Goes, no, and she smacks the thing out of her hand. She goes, he goes, hey, I'm the doctor here, you dumbass. And she's like, he's allergic. Why didn't you say that, you stupid kids? And then, you know, tries to keep him. She literally says to Dan, like, you know, don't, Try let, to them stay put you, don't let them put you to sleep. I'm like, well, so, he's going into surgery because he is fucked He up. is fucking messed. So they get to the hospital. And... She asks, like, how long until he's into surgery, and, you know, it's 15 minutes, and she goes, okay, don't let them put you to sleep while I'd like to see him try. And then she starts running out, and then Dad shows up again. Hey, hey, I got a question for you. What the fuck, lady? And then she's just like, you know, I gotta go, and she's like, you know, no, you're not going anywhere. I'm sick of this shit. And she's like, but you've gotta let me go. She grabs his keys and drives home. He's got, she's got 15 minutes, she goes home to change. <laughs> That's essentially what this. Hey, leads she's to. getting ready for it. Fight. Yeah. She gets home, goes home to change. So she goes home, pulls off all the fucking pictures off her mirror, dressed up in badass chick outfit. The um, Debbie had given her one of her um, studded bracelets, which is now spiked, which we never get an explain f- explanation for that. Wraps the wraps uh, Rick's white boy headband on her on her hand. Grabs the thing Sheila, the little bug machine Sheila had, and puts it on her belt. And then Freddy, and then we cut to Dan about to go into surgery trying to fight the fucking anesthetic, which is never going to work. Because, mm. by the way, even in the 80s, I don't know if you know how this works, the gas is just the extra thing. They shoot you up with fucking stuff first. Yep. So, you're going out, dude. You're fucked. Um, so, she sees what's up. She sees the Freddy's there. So, she's just like, get away from him, you son of a bitch. She jumps through her mirror. <laughs> get away from him, you bitch. <laughs> yeah. And then she's asleep. Um, we don't see when she fell asleep, but she fell asleep. Right. And then Dan's out too, and then Dan looks up, and it's Freddy as his doctor, Dr. Kruger. There's a figure of that too. Mm-hmm. Um, and then they kind of, it, it's weird because they sort of see each other, and she's like, Freddy was here. Where'd he, he just left. Just kind of left. And then they start running in towards, and then they're in this like room, and then it's like a kaleidoscope. Freddy spins it around, out for a stroll, love birds, and fucking spins it around. And they have trouble walking through this thing, and then that's kind of it for Dan. Well, he stabs him. Oh, yeah, that's right. He stabs him again, and then Dan's bleeding. So they bring, they, they, the they doctors bring actually out. pull him out. Yeah, like, they bring pull him, him back. Out. Yeah, and he's and just he like, okay, the, well, he he's gets, like, I gotta go now. See ya. And then she's like, all right, you're right. See ya. All right. And then she's got to pull up to Freddy. Yeah, and then she's in the, the fucking, she's in the church. Because that's where you go now. I don't know why, but it becomes a thing now. Um, I do love that earlier she just like, she says to Debbie like you know, biceps and fists aren't going to hurt him. And then meanwhile she now punches him in the face a lot. And then um, so they have a fight, and this is where it's like I've been guarding my game for a long time, bitch. And then they ninja fight for a minute, and uh, Freddy of course knows ninja because he's he's Freddy, and that's what he does. And. So then she tries to ghost bust him. Yeah, she does try to bust him. Uh, she does pull her proton pack out of the weirdest way I've ever seen. So she grabs the bug thing she has, punches a hole in a wall. Somehow she knows that's where the electricity is. Pulls the cable out, doesn't die, and plugs it into this thing. Shoots Freddy in the chest, and he goes ah ah ah. But then he stops awing, and she looks proud of herself. I'm like the second he stopped screaming. Been busted, bitch. You should know. He's but, fine. But he fucking, he wicks, whisks away his, his chest wound. It's like, what's up, lady? I got you. He says, I am eternal. And then backhands her. And this is where she lies down. And she looks up. And it the the nursery rhyme starts playing. Of like, you know, uh, as I lay me down to sleep, the master of dreams my soul will keep. If I should die before I wake. And this is where she remembers. Um... You know, evil will see itself and shall die. So then she's like, holy shit. And then she uses the um, broken um, stained yeah. glass yeah. and reflects his own image on him. And then he, she's like, let them out, let them out. So the souls start busting through Freddy's chest. Um, this effect is amazing. Mm-hmm. It's all practical. It was made using a giant version of Freddy's chest. Um, if you watch the documentary, you see where the Asian, little tiny Asian lady who was holding it why it was just one person, I don't know. That it accidentally falls down 
as all the people are pushing through, and it just fucking collapses, and you see her go fucking flying. It is fucked up to watch, but apparently she's fine, so it's all right. We can watch it and enjoy it now. But, yeah, so they basically, all the, the people just, and this is where we see Linnea quickly uh, throw her assets through, and all these things burst out and rip Freddy apart, and their souls escape, and Freddy's dead, maybe, and she says, rest in hell, which I'm like, that's insult to injury, kicks the glove away, and walks away. And, and we then, see all the souls' faces like, goodbye! Bye, thank you. And then they leave. And then they float up to, I guess, heaven or whatever. Mm-hmm. Or wherever the fuck they're supposed to go. The good dream, maybe. Yeah. And then cut to, you know, a couple weeks later. Her and Dan are dating. Dan are dating. Aw. And she's just like, you know, he's like, oh, I've slept all through last night and I'm fine. She's like, I can get three hours if I'm lucky, but I don't mind. I have more reason to stay awake. I mean, only a teenager could say that. Mm-hmm. And then he's like, oh, let's make a wish. She's like, I don't believe that. And he goes, yeah, you do. What are you basing that on? Anyway, so he flicks the... the coin into the fountain the fountain like there's an image of freddie waving and then she's like oh fuck and he's just like what did you wish for and she just stops goes oh yeah right happy if i say it, it won't come true and then we cut back to the the Sinead o'connor song yep credits and we're done we're done here mm-hmm. so yeah mm-hmm. um not as good as dream warriors Mm-mm. but i think it was close Fuck yeah. Uh, I love this fucking movie. Because I am giving it an 8 mm. white boy karates <laughs> out of 10. Mm. Um, so far, they're 3 for 4 mm. out of these movies. Mm-hmm. Um, now I know we're in for t- we're in for troubled waters. We're in The next two you're not going to like, um, plain and simple. Um, but my rating for this is a... Um, and here's where my bias starts showing. Um... This is uh, this is ten rest in hells out of ten for me. Uh, oh, I, so you're just like... I fucking love this movie. This is one of my favorite of the series. I can't as much as I would like to be like, oh well, maybe it's just no. I I I've watched this movie a shit ton of times in my Although life. Although you've put out full disclosures on this since I, we started. Yeah, this, like, like this is I'm biased on this. Trust me. As much as I've been making fun of Nightmare Five, wait till you see the rating I give it. You know what I mean? Like. I don't like Nightmare 5, but it's going to get a high rating just because it's still, as much as dumb and fucking idiotic as that movie is, I still would watch it over so many other movies that exist. Right. Um, just because it's Freddy Krueger, and I love a lot of everything about Freddy. And But this is also a childhood favorite, uh, because like I said, I bought it when I was 13 and watched it a lot. Things like that, and my you know my childhood does rear its head into these these things. So I fucking love this movie. Um, as you could hear, I pretty much can recite lines of dialogue verbatim. So I clearly am a fan. And I'm remembering all this from memory because I didn't really get a chance to watch the movie all the way through this week. I was very busy. But I know it. So, right. you know. Uh, as far as MVPs go, mm-hmm. this is going to be my first time I give it to Freddy. Mm. Um, like, I... I no surprise, he gets the most screen time here, mm-hmm. so he's got time to be, yep. you know, a little silly, a little creepy, a little mm-hmm. scary. You know, we get yeah. we get to start to see that this is this this movie series is starting to go away from being. At, well, this the next one does try. Five does try to be scary, right. fails but tries. Um, my MVP is a guy who I wanted to be when I got into high school. It would be Rick. Um, white boy I, karate. I wanted to be white boy karate when I was in high school, when I was 13. I was looking at him being like, I, that's who I want to be. Like, I liked the fact that he wore like the, the suit jackets and shit like that. I liked his hair. You know, I really wanted to be this guy, even though it was like the eighties and like, people don't dress like that, but I'm like, I could bring it back. I never did, but I wanted to. Well, we get these things like when he wakes up, when he gets up from the coffee, he's mm-hmm. like, hello baby. Like he's like yeah. weird fifties. He's just kind of too attitude. cool. He's too cool for school. And that's part of the reason I liked it, because I was the very shy, nerdy kid. He's who I wanted to be. So I have to just, out of, what's the word I'm looking for? Like, just for posterity, I have to put him at the at the, the forefront of this one. So we are now done with Elm Street for now. Mm-hmm. We do put Freddy back to sleep until next month. Yes. But as, of course, we mentioned, we are mm-hmm. going to be continuing this Wes Craven train. Yep. Moving into the 90s. Well, next month, well, not yet. Next month, we get a triple shot. Yeah. Um, because the last one's in the 80s and the final two are in the 90s. Yeah. Um, so we get we get three next month. Um, That's what I said. We're putting him to yeah. bed for April, but mm-hmm. and May then he will return. May he returns with a vengeance. In a big bad way. Yes. 
Uh, but we do move to the 90s mm-hmm. for other Wes Craven films. Yes. And next week we go to November 1st, 1991 mm-hmm. for The People Under the Stairs. Which is a movie I haven't seen in a very long time. I'm very um, excited. I believe a horror comedy-ish, no? No. no. It's a horror. It's got... It's got because according to this, it has a little bit of. It's got buffoonery. Yeah, okay. It's got buffoonery, but it's not meant to be. It's 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 meant to be more satire, not comedy. Right. Um, the there is buffoonery like going a on. scream type. Yeah, like it's a not little meant bit. to be all out comedy. Mm, no, but. because this this is much more horrific than scream in right. a sense of the the subject matter is much more fucked up. Right. Um, oddly enough, than just killing people, the subject matter is more fucked up. So the comedy is the the is buffoonery. In a way of alleviating the tension. Fair enough. Mm. So we do get to that next week. Mm-hmm. So we're done for now. Yes. So we'll get out of here. Mm-hmm. You're Steve. You're Justin. And we're way back and gone. I've been guarding my game for a long time, bitch.